Welcome back to Learning Solidity. In today's tutorial, we're going to be covering input and output parameters of functions, and more specifically, returning multiple values as well as function parameter mapping. Now, there is a page on the Solidity documentation which covers all aspects of, the t of today's tutorial, which I'll leave in the description box down below. But for now, we're going to jump straight into things. Now, I'm going to start with the whole concept of function parameter mapping. So, traditionally, oh, it's not typing. There we go. Traditionally, with a function, um, let's call this return first value, you would expect functions, uh, function parameters to be passed in sequentially. So, for instance, in this case, you have uint, uh, uint a and uint b. And that's going to return the a value because that is the way I'm getting my syntax right. Return a. So that's essentially going to return the first value which is passed into the function, or in our case, a. So when we make a function call to this, so for instance, caller um, space public returns the uint and simply return, return first value, which is going to be four and eight. So in this case, we expect four to be returned because four is in essence the first value being passed into the parameter and therefore that's the first value, which in this case it is, it's four. Nothing unusual there. So what we're going to do is create a mapping for this function call now. So all the function call parameters. So we're going to say that four is in fact B and eight is in fact A. Now this is the style of JSON style of um, mapping or I think it's often referred to other languages, obviously dictionary or any sort of like hash mapping or, or something along those lines. So, but it's following the standard JSON style. So now if I create the function, obviously previously before it returned four, but now we've mapped it to eight, it should return the value of eight. And that in a nutshell is pretty much how you can map function parameters within Solidity. You don't have to pass it in a sequential sort of primitive order. You can obviously pass a JSON object, which will create the parameter mapping itself. The next thing we're going to look at is the concept of returning multiple values. This is a concept which is quite foreign to a lot of programming languages such as Java and so forth, where you can only return a singular value. So what we're going to do is create a function and return all values. So in this case, we're going to pass uint a, uint b, and also a uint for c. We're going to return uint, a uint, and a uint. It's probably also worth mentioning at this point, it doesn't always have to be the same data type. It, these can obviously be a uint, a bool, and I don't know if you want to chuck in a string as well. But for now, I'm going to stick with three uints just to keep things simple. So we can actually encapsulate our return statement in the in the sort of like way a tuple is returned. So let's say we're returning, open close braces, a, b, and c. And there we have a simple return, and that needs to be returned. So I keep doing that. And that is basically our encapsulation of our tuple, and therefore that's the value that's going to be returned. But kind of how do we handle it? Okay, because we've defined it in that way, we can also handle it in a similar way. So let's create a function called call, let's call it all, which is simply going to return, I suppose it's public, returns uint, uint, and actually no, we're going to return one uint of everything. Um, which is actually going to... No, actually, uh, it's easy for me to show you an example if I actually return all the values. So, in this case, we are going to map our return statement directly. So, let's say return, return all values, and then simply pass in 4, 5, and 6. Now, obviously, we could pass in a, um, a parameter mapping like we did up here, but for now, I'm just going to keep this quite straightforward and just simply pass in that. So, now, if I create this and call call it all, we would get returned for six and five, which is oh, did I map that wrong? I did. I mapped it A, C, and B. But there you go. There's a very good example. So obviously, I've mapped in four, five, and six, which is here four, five, and six, and then gets switched back to four, six, and five. So let's put that back in the correct order, so I'm not confusing myself here with these tutorials. Okay, so now we've mapped back to that. How do we handle these variables within Solidity themselves? Now, we can actually do that by simply creating a mapping structure. Um, so we can create a uint, and let's call this x, y, and z, and be assigned to that. Why is that not happy? It should have worked. Does that only work with var? x, 
y and z yeah it only actually works with var even though var should actually um automatically map to a uint anyway uh, just this is kind of the nature of what um what essentially a var is in with it sorry let me say that again that's kind of the nature of what a variable is within solidity it's essentially just always going to be a uint so now we can actually swap these values around now traditionally when you swapped a value in a lot of programming languages you'd have to create a, like a, an interstitial variable so for instance if i want to start up x with y what you traditionally do is something called create a variable called like temp and equal to x and then set um y uh, x is equal to y and then finally y is equal to temp and that's how you'd like swap a variable around in the in previously in, or in all the programming languages within solidity and this concept of tuples um we can also simply state y x y is equal to y x and return basically x y and z in that fashion we can also access the um, leftmost and rightmost values as well so for instance if we just wanted to assign um, let's just say x to in this case only four so we're basically saying only get the leftmost value is equal to return all values say 5 10 and 15. now I'm basically stating here we only want the leftmost value we can also do the same thing for the rightmost value which i will now do with z so the other way around essentially comma z and let's just call this multiples of 10 so 10 20 and 30. so now if i call that if we followed this right x should be 5 y should be x is swapped with y so 4 so 5, 4, and then z should be equal to 30. So if I've done this right, it should be 5, 4, 30. Let's find out how wrong I am. No, 5, 4, 30. And there we have it. And that's a simple way of utilizing multiple return statements, tuples, and parameter mapping within Solidity. Now, I'm going to pretty much call this there. I do want to mention that I've actually updated my GitHub on the support pages, which looks at the previous tutorial I covered, where I was looking at nested arrays. Um, I've expanded on that a little bit more, going on to how even you could actually convert nested array to byte data and back uh, from byte data to a nested array again. Um, that's on the GitHub homepage, which I'll leave description. I'll leave in the description box down below. Um, if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If uh, you would like to stay up to date with my tutorials and new videos, hit the subscribe button. But until next time, good luck with Program Solidity, and I'll catch you around.